been your experience with computing while at school, as a student and as a teacher? A smattering of coding, perhaps? Lots of word processing, Excel and PowerPoint, maybe some robotics, web design or graphics. But you probably taught yourself much more than you ever learnt at school. And this was the problem with our focus on ICT and integration. It was all about learning how to use technology. But technology was becoming easier and easier to use every year. You did not need to study at school to learn it, and students worked this out. An interest in computing plummeted. Worse, the focus on ICT in schools killed off computer science, except in isolated programs and in our senior years. So we've been working towards a computing curriculum over the last five years, and we've been really successful. Computer education is now so high on the agenda, it's a subject of national debate. Digital technologies, computer science and coding, the language of computers and technology should be taught in every primary and every secondary school in Australia. And, Australia. and you know we've been really successful when governments are prepared to support teacher professional development, such as this course. We need to be part of the global economy. The world is changing. But we have to do something different. More of the same ICT-focused computing courses that were so bad they were actually turning students away from wanting to study computing were not going to work. Nor did we wish to take the pure learn to code approach. So we were refocusing at computer education back to the fundamental concepts and higher order thinking skills, much as it was when it was first introduced into schools. We've given computers the power to turn motors, to make sounds, to draw pictures, and we've found ways of giving children the power to control the computer. So the child can make the computer do anything that he can describe in a suitable mathematical language by typing on a keyboard. A computer-controlled turtle is made to draw and dance by programs so simple that all children invent them in the first days of the course. Thus the child acquires a taste for math power that grows and grows as his projects become more original, more complex, and more varied. And so the child doesn't have to be told by a teacher whether he's right or wrong. He can see for himself whether it works. And that's what science and knowledge is about. Back then, this was a very different approach to learning. But the world moved on. Silicon Valley success stories and the reality of how computers are disrupting jobs have become impossible to ignore. It is now widely recognised that we need to prepare our students, all of our students, for jobs that will include the use of complex information processing, automated processes, robotics, artificial intelligence, and new and as yet undiscovered technologies. And for teachers to be the agents of this change. Now I'm Jason Zagami. My journey with computing began as a teenager. Spending Saturdays in the back corner of a candy shop in the Woodridge Mall. Learning coding. Teaching my maths teacher programming in the afternoon so that she could teach our class the next day. But she also taught through project-based learning. And we would spend our holidays dreaming up new electronics and robotics projects to undertake each term. So I then fell into computing at uni. I was doing mathematics, physics, but eventually discovered you could become a computing teacher. So I wrote the introduction to the internet, spending much of my time teaching other teachers as students, writing self-paced computing tutorials and developing online courses. And this gave me the freedom to explore different ways of teaching and I fell naturally back into project-based learning. In a small school with timetabling limitations, I simply got to work around them, running a drop-in class five periods a day in a learning space that I got to design, where students undertook science electives studying robotics, space, computing courses, all in the same classroom as senior students studying IPT and ITS senior subjects, and all from any timetable line. And as ICT coordinator, I had fun developing projects for our junior school classes. My favourite of which was a month-long space exploration project, where Year 5s applied and were selected into a national training program run by Year 9 and 10 students, while senior students wrote computer simulations to mock up the classroom into a spaceship, all culminating in a four-hour space flight to Mars. So I did all this to try and make a difference. 
So then I made the decision to try to make a difference on a wider scale at university and in teacher education. And I've had the pleasure along the way of helping shape this new subject. And now I'm helping to make a reality. So that's my story. Glenn. And I'm Professor Glenn Finger, Professor of Education in the School of Education and Professional Studies at the Gold Coast campus of Griffith University. I look forward to working with Jason and yourself throughout this course, and my particular contribution will be in the design thinking module. I have to um, introduce myself in a similar way to Jason by saying that I am 62 years old, so I've seen some enormous technological changes through, throughout my lifetime, and these have quickened over the last two to three decades. But in particular, my interest um, as, as a young child with Lego when I first uh, experienced Lego, my parents acquired Lego, I would design, construct, evaluate, pull apart, redesign, reconstruct. So I, in a sense, looking back, I had a little bit of design thinking that was being developed, but it was the, the, um, the, the joy of, of that process. As a teacher, I was 24 years as a, uh, working with Education Queensland as a HP specialist, primary teacher, deputy principal and acting principal in a wide variety of settings. And I'd just like to highlight um, before uh, coming to academia, um, I was deputy principal at Coombar Primary School where the Queensland Sunrise Centre was established in the early 1990s and students in years 6, 7 and 8 took a laptop computer with them and it was informed by Papert's work around Logo and Logo Writer. And I saw the joy and engagement of those students in their learning. So it's, stepping forward then I was had the pleasure of being on the evaluation team of the development of the then Queensland Studies Authority, which became the Queensland School Curriculum Council, development of the technology education curriculum. And I saw in the trial and pilot schools the really wonderful work that teachers and students were doing around design challenges and developing solu solutions, many of which um, those design solutions were digital solutions. So I'm looking forward greatly to working with Jason and yourself throughout this, um, this professional development and I look forward to connecting with you in the design mod in the module on design thinking. Thank you. Thanks Graham. We're all on journeys. The goal of this course is to give you confidence to teach digital technologies and hopefully become leaders in teaching of digital technologies. But of course many of you are already doing fantastic things and are great teachers already. I'm not just saying this, I know it to be true. But with 1,500 of you doing this course, many explanations will be for those that have not heard them before. But I hope you will still all learn something from the approach presented, the technologies we explore, and the lens that we're looking through at the curriculum. So please do not be offended when we cover something that you already do well. The message is for others. And through our online discussions, it will be an opportunity for you to share the great things you're already doing. And please forgive my insistence at times, teaching is a wonderfully diverse profession and I certainly do not have all the answers, but I do think I have something to share. And you are here after all to learn something. So forgive my fashion, my passion. I love teaching and I love technology and project-based learning. But above all, I hope you really enjoy this course. But it is not a course just about pedagogy. You are here to learn something new about this subject. We will be exploring the five key concepts of abstraction, data, automation, digital systems, and interactions, and how to develop the five high-order high thinking skills that I've framed this course around. Strategic thinking, futures thinking, systems thinking, computational thinking, and design thinking. But you also go away with some practical approaches of how to develop five sorts of projects coding projects, robotics projects, and information projects. But unlike other subjects, you haven't studied this in primary school, and most of you not in secondary. So in eight short modules, we will be exploring what students will learn in 11 years, hopefully bringing you up to where we want students to get to. And for up to six, I'm quietly confident that you'll be right to teach. For seven to ten, it'll be a starting point. 
and a guide to where you need to develop. Each week, you should aim to complete a module. And there'll be six short videos and six short activities, plus a quiz. And the quiz is the only thing required for the completion certificate. No minimum scores. The quizzes are there to help provide you with a self-assessment on which to reflect on your progress. We will also have a weekly collaborate session, what you call iConnect, on Wednesdays at 3.30. But to really engage your learning, we have some optional coding activities and robotics activities each week. And here you'll be using some of the tools you need for the course. We have our Edison robot, a Makey Makey interface board, and a little code bug, which we'll be using for wearables and as a device that we can program. We'll also be making use of Microsoft Excel 2016, which as EQ teachers you can download for free for use at home. But to truly model project-based learning, you can follow along with the development of your own project. And this can be submitted at the end of the course and used for partial credit for a Griffith University Certificate of STEM Education. So now I wish to leave you with one key idea, fundamental to understanding digital technologies. I hear teachers all the time talking about their plans for teaching digital technologies, doing B-bots and Scratch, using Spheros and teaching Python, but this is not digital technologies. All modern technologies are ICTs, including programming languages. And they could be used to teach any subject. Of course we're going to use them for teaching in digital technologies. They're great tools. But we do not teach tools for the sake of teaching tools. This is where we went wrong with ICT education. In digital technologies, we're moving from teaching students to be passive consumers of technological tools to be active creators of technological solutions. And this is why I hope you're here, to learn how to do that.